Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with another Rack End Digital Rebar uh, tour demo. Uh, in this case, we are doing CubeVert, uh, which is a virtualization VM runner uh, that sits on top of Kubernetes. So the idea is that instead of using virtualization and then Kubernetes, we're creating bare metal Kubernetes. As you know, that's something we, we focus on quite a bit with our crib, Kubernetes rebar integration. And uh, in this case, it's using the Kubernetes APIs to run virtual machines. We think this is the way forward for virtual machines. Um, we think it displaces something like OpenStack, where you've got layers and sandwiches and a lot of complexity. And um, we're watching uh, some companies, named notably Red Hat, dump a lot of resources uh, into uh, KubeVirt. As a matter of fact, there were uh, much higher activity rates in KubeVirt than in some of the other virtualization projects that we've been seeing. And so um, we think this is a really interesting project. And on top of all that, it's just super easy uh, to get it running. So I wanted to show you the KubeVirt integration that we added into the latest version of Crib. Um, and so that shows up in this way. So I have a Kubernetes uh, cluster ready to be built in this case. So I have uh, four machines for my KubeVirt demo. And what we've added here is a stage for Crib. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, crib Kubevert with, of course, a task for Kubevert. And that task actually includes all of the scripting in it, and it includes a template. Uh, this is the template that you need to kubectl uh, cuttle the Kubevert uh, system, the control planes and such. So let me show you how that works. It's, it's really, really straightforward. In this case, all I have to do to make this go is take a workflow. And I'm going to assume that you've already watched any one of our numerous uh, crib demos. We have a ton of them showing you how to do all sorts of things from Ceph and Istio using Helm to just plain setting the damn thing up. Uh, so I'm going to start with the workflow. Uh, we're going to do a live cluster. So this is the one with using CentOS. We've only been testing uh, KubeVert on CentOS. So if you want to do it in other ways, you're going to need to look at the code and check. Um, but not hard, not a, not a big variation. So crib live, clone, and I'm going to call this my kubevert live workflow. So this is pretty much the one we're used to seeing. And I need, oh, I didn't mean to create a fully new workflow. I hit the wrong button. Sorry, everybody. I'm cloning it. Oh, sorry. Uh, in this case, editing workflows is not something that was exposed in the, is, is coming. I'm used to playing with it, so. All right, here's my test. So you have to be in the test portal until, if you're reading this later, uh, then it's probably in, already in production, but it's not, not as of this screening, so I have to go into my crib live cluster, clone. Notice here I actually have editing capabilities, so a nice little feature creeped in here. Uh, cube vert. If I could type. Uh, live. And so in this case, all I have to do is add in my cube vert stage. Thank you. And I need to make it happen before the end. And we don't need Helm in this case, so I'm going to remove Helm. So this is just going to be a bare metal cluster that installs cube vert. I'm going to make it green and cloudy. And there we go. Okay, so at this point we now have this new uh, cluster that the only difference here between my regular one is it installing this kubevert stage. It looks excellent. And I already have my machines all queued up and ready to go. Uh, and I haven't logged in on this site. Nope. So let me log in over here. Thank you. Uh, the reason I wanted to log in is because that lets me have bulk actions, which is my preferred way to make this stuff go. And uh, all I'm going to do is just start that workflow. It's pretty straightforward. I've already gone through and, and cleaned up uh, my cluster profile. Uh, I took out Helm, so it's not going to install any of the Helm pieces, which is fine. And uh, we're not rebooting, so KExec isn't going to take any action. We've been using the same thing to show CoreOS. Uh, this KubeVert and CoreOS are not compatible. 
at this time. Um, and I will explain why as soon as I start the workflow. So we want our kubevert live workflow. And system is now started the install process. Everything's good. I made it a little smaller so it wouldn't, wouldn't scroll the screen. So if I was doing CoreOS, um, one of the things that the kubevert scripts do is they're going to install QEMU. And they're also going to check to make sure QMU works. At this point, we're not failing. If you you don't, if you get warnings, eventually uh, we'll make it so that it's strict or not strict. There are no actual parameters for Kubevert. Um, the versioning that is done by Kubevert uh, is embedded in the YAML file that's it's in the templates, and so we'll be replacing the templates to make all that stuff go. Um, oh, good. Look, we're moving pretty quickly through this process. Uh, I will jump in and show you the Kubevert stage once it starts doing its its thing. Um, until then, this is just a normal install process. Everything's going along. Um, while we're while that's going in the background, here I'm going to watch this version, the event scroller, and um, so I have a uh, machine running, and I've installed this thing called Cube uh, Cuddle. You already know Cube Cuddle, but there's a uh, Vert Cuddle that has. Um, some of the extra console commands, and I'll show you how that works because we'll need it. Um, pretty straightforward from that perspective. All right. So we're moving through our configuration process. We've already elected a leader, and um, we're just waiting for the machines to come up. And there's, you know, as always, there's some variability in, in how these machines perform or the internet responds to different machines, and that's perfectly normal. All right. So here, um, and what I've already done is I have defined a, I've exported uh, kube config, and I'm just going to put it in temp admin.conf like that. It's excellent, and I'm going to create a new tab over here, make it a little bigger for everybody, and do the same thing here. That's not what I want. So. Excellent. So now we're just waiting for the uh, install to progress to a point that, where we actually have the configuration file. Let's see if it's here. Not yet. All right. This will get updated when the admin uh, file is generated. There we go. That looks excellent. What timing. So over here, um, I think it's in my history. Yep. So there's a DRPCLI call. Um, that's going to go get from this, get the from that profile, the admin conf, sort an admin conf, yay. So that those two commands together allow me to do a kube cuddle, uh, get nodes, and we can see how many nodes we have in, in the system. Yay, we have a couple already. So installs moving along very, very nicely. I like that. And so if we look here, here we actually have kubevert running. Let me show you what that uh, job looks like as it's running. Um, oh, I have debug turned on on this node, so we're getting some longer. So it's installing all the QMU packages that are required. That looks great. It's just what I want. Lots and lots of stuff. And this is really handy, so you're not worrying about, did I have all the prereqs installed? And then, um, oof, then it does a QMU check. Make sure everything's good. Uh, I'm getting a warning on these systems because I don't have IOMMU. I'm sure there's a nerdy way to pronounce the uh, IO MMU stuff and then it's actually running the uh, cube cuddle command that builds all the resource definitions and then waits so in this case it actually waited until the um, uh, the kubevert uh, master control was up and uh, boy it finished very very easy so in this time I have installed kubernetes start to finish and I've installed kubevert into it, and now I'm ready to actually show you that kubevert is working. Um, so wow, all right, that's a lot. I'm, I'm pretty much done with rebar at this point because uh, my Kubernetes is, is in. Now it'll keep running kubevert on other nodes and we'll get some more machines that are capable of running kubevert, as you can see, whoops, and now my cluster's built. Boy, all right, uh, certainly don't waste time when you're using uh, digital rebar to install this stuff. Uh, and so there's a quick start guide. Basically, we've already gone through this. So in this case, we've already installed uh, the kubevert YAML. Uh, we've set policies. Everything's good. Now what we need to do, 
I've downloaded kubectl and then uh, we're now at a point where we can actually go through some of the practice sessions and so they already have a VM manifest I'm not gonna try and create a whole bunch of crazy stuff I'm just showing you how we're picking up right here at the deploy VM stage of this uh, workflow so I'm starting here and in my window I'm gonna clear it so there's less clutter I'm just pasting kubectl I already showed you that that works because I got the uh, admin conf and this is going to create the VM. So it tells me the VM is created and if I come back and kubectl get pods uh, it hasn't created the VM yet so it'll do that. What what happens with uh, uh, kubevert still aren't used to saying it uh, one of the things I can do is I have some extra commands in here. I can um, They've extended the API, so I can say get VMs, and it'll show me what the VMs are, which is pretty handy. Um, and I can also check the virtual machine images and see if they're virtual machine images. Um, so in this case, I've started, I've applied this demo. I've tried to get my VMs. Um, I need to actually start the VM, and this is where I need vert cuddle. So over here... I'm going to say vert cuddle start test VM. And now it's scheduled it to start it. Pretty straightforward. So I can start it, I can stop it, I can delete it. All this is cool. You're saying, yeah, Rob, yay, you follow out a quick start. And does it work? Which is the operative question. And so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to actually console in, show you that it worked. I'm going to do that in another window so that I don't have to worry about uh, losing my control plane. So here's my, it's the same same path. So uh, let's, so let's see what we should do. Yeah, let me just do it like that. So if we do vert cuddle, it's not up yet. So let's see. That's VMIs, get VMs. So that machine's running. Let's see if the pods are there. Ready, container crew. So it's not, it's not all the way up yet. And the thing to remember with uh, this is that we are using Kubernetes APIs to start the VMs. There is no different VM control plane. It's using extensions to uh, the APIs for Kubernetes, which is one of the reasons why I think this is really exciting, uh, because we're working within the context of the system. Now, if you were a VM shop and you wanted to virtualize 100% of your infrastructure, this might not be your, your first choice. Uh, but if you are trying to reduce your VM footprint and move things more to containers, this is a really good way to take things that are in virtual machines and run them in virtual machines unapologetically and also build a whole bunch of containers around that infrastructure. And so it's a nice way, uh, if you need VMs, to include VMs in your, in your architectures without having to stand up a whole virtualized infrastructure and then put Kubernetes on top of that. Uh, and I'm a big fan of this. I think Kubernetes is the as the bottom layer. It's sensible that containers on metal. Uh, that's a great thing. What we've done with Rebar gives you so much control uh, of the of the metal and the life cycles of the metal, and gives you APIs for that. That you really don't need additional infrastructure wrappers uh, like virtual machines to give you the type of experience you're used to in cloud. You just get it on bare metal, uh, and that's what for, that's what we're all about uh, from a rack end perspective. That and then integrating that into everything else you build because that's the other side of that. So, I've been stalling long enough. Let's see if we can get in. Uh, in this case, I might not have set up. Let's check uh, kubectl. Get pods, see if I'm actually attached. That looks actually really good. Uh, I think I actually have to say test VM. That would make sense. Um, and so right now we're connected. There's my console. There's my service login. If I wanted to escape, I would do, uh, let's see, control right bracket. That looks good. So now I know how to escape. So let's try this again, test VM. And now I can say I want to get uh, Cirrus as my user. And my password is goes cubs go. It's a Chicago fan there. And that's it. We're in. Uh, you name dash A. Hot dog. I am actually attached to the VM running in kubectl start to finish um, and the whole video is what about five or ten minutes um, not a big deal setting up rebar itself takes um, seconds really if you're you especially if you want to automate the process learning it takes maybe an hour if you got that much time um, and then let's ping 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8. there's a whole bunch of networking magic and stuff that 
the cube for people actually got right. Um, and, and the expectation is we're going to be using uh, container networking and container storage as ways to uh, undergird the virtual machines in this case. So a lot of work still to come. I'm not trying to pretend that um, this solution is a complete replacement for VMware or OpenStack or any of the number, numerous uh, very good virtualization platforms, but it should be on your radar. And if you're planning a deployment and Kubernetes is a big part of your, your future, you really should be looking at Kubert and how it works because uh, we think it's the, the way forward for virtual machines with Kubernetes. If you have questions, uh, please jump in and, and talk to us. Uh, we're RackN. I'm Rob Hirschfeld, uh, Digital Rebar. Uh, you can start in a couple of different places. Our recommended place is to start at the portal with the Quick Start Guide right there in, in the beginning. Uh, and all of this comes just from, you can find it from the Digital Rebar. If you'd rather start from the Rebar side, the open source pieces, then you're welcome to follow it from here. And you can, you can check all of our stuff, all our pretty green lights and uh, get involved however you want. Um, we're, we really want to work with you. So come in, check us out. Let us know what you think. This is Rob Hirschfeld. I hope uh, learned something today.